Welcome back to Podcast of the Hero. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Cornbot. Uh, he's the robot made of corn uh, that haunts you in your dreams. Um, we're also <laughs> presented that by nobody, our there's, patrons. There's going to be no nice. clarification on what fucking Cornbot no. actually does. <laughs> if you want to know what Cornbot does, go back and listen to all the rest of episodes in season two. It won't make anything clearer. He does, a corn bot does everything. He digests your corn for you. He shoots amateur corn. He he does all kinds of stuff. Get out of here with that um, porno stuff. <laughs> uh, it's also brought to you by our patrons. Um, and I'm going to run through them. Where are you going to go? It's a long list. So, like, strap in. Uh, Canberra isn't that bad, Rody. Yes, it is. Uh, Julia. Red FX, uh, the fat brown kid, foolish bale, the Fritzy that lives inside the rat that lives inside Fritzy's butthole's butthole. Nice. Uh, Brett Boss Blackwood, yes, I be a Newfoundlander by uh, Spit Goth Yo, absolutely the best podcast, a work in progress. Uh, I'm not going to read that guy's name. Sebastodon, the rat that lives inside Fritzy's butthole. I swallow cum. Source the odd as a result of a spray fart. Come to New Brunswick. Uh, Rob the anti-human. Uh, Peggy Thrill, Green Street. It's okay. Spigot stopped being a slur years ago. Uh, the lady in red is dancing with me cheek to chi. Fucking Chris Dubois. Uh, fire fee. Uh, AE Common Thread. We're all Velocicopters. Zane. Rody loves my dink. Uh, happy anniversary jiggles. Okay. Um, Deconomus, our least important patron, which is Mushy. Um, <laughs> 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 Zach, uh, the final Dan Cage Pandas, Corn Man, Jeffrey Mason, TBJ, Yuri, Fruit, Ashwin, and High Tops. Wow. So thank you to all of our patrons that support the podcast. Um, they're always trying to get me with ridiculous names. They're always they trying change to make their it... names every week. They make me say bad things. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, man. <laughs> so today uh, we're joined by a couple friendly yeah. lads. Yeah, and that's so. so it, it it we have Justin <laughs> and Bricks from uh, Majors. Is that that's the that's correct? It. It's that's just it, majors. Correct. Majors. That's it. That's confusing um, to say for me because I am so very familiar with the two of you, formerly of the Fully Down. Mm-hmm. It's a bit of a departure. Did you, you didn't want to talk about that, Bricks? It looks like you look immediately <laughs> disappointed I've that I brought no it up. Notes. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so, uh, the first thing I want to say is uh, being down for something and being up for something is the same thing. So like I'm fully down for something or I'm fully totally up, up for that. It means the same thing, but one is down and one is up. Yeah. So Enjoy I yourself. tried to find I tried to find uh what that term is for those situations and I couldn't find anything for that specific type of thing, but I saw someone on Reddit coin the term oppo-sames. Oppo so I, I think that's a good way to describe something. When two two opposite things mean the same thing, okay. it's an oppo same. It's like when it's cold as hell or hot as hell, it's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Ah, he's found yeah. another one immediately. I was yeah, trying to make a fast one, but I, I have absolutely nothing. <laughs> I was thinking about nothing, dude. I wasn't going to be racking trying. my brain this whole time. I'll have it's just cobwebs, <laughs> Rody's brain, just a hamster <laughs> all off the wheel. Just sitting here going like, man, the veins are really popping on my forehead tonight. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I just have only a couple of things about the Fully Down that I wanted to talk about um, before we get into majors. I got Um, a lot of things, dude. And they're all questions about Gabe. (laughs) (laughs) Get into it. I don't know anything about it. First of all, that's not how you pronounce his name. But yeah, that's not how you pronounce his name. That's not how you pronounce his name. No, no. How do you? It was Gab. Our singer's name was Gab, but Gabrielle. It was Gab. I called him Gabe. Gabe. I called him Gabe to his face for okay. 
But you yeah, guys yeah, did. Yeah. Well, yeah, we didn't correct you because we wanted to see how long it would go until he got mad. <laughs> <laughs> it's been like 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> and he still has so i want to ask a question about that it's like you guys were fucking rip rocking for years and years with gab and then things finally kind of like went like it felt like you you guys and gab were not seeing eye to eye for a long time like from an outside <laughs> perspective and then you finally Go your separate ways. You find Justin, who's a beautiful fucking singer. I even remember the Mr. Control, like that little demo song that you did for the Fully Down. I know fucking everything. Uh, (laughs) But uh, you finally get your shit together. You get this fucking awesome singer. And then what happened? Like, just what happened? Uh, Did you release anything with Justin? I I mean, did you? Sorry. I I could tell it. it basically was... I mean, in theory, like everyone who is doing the music and like in the band, they were like, oh yeah, we got a new singer. Like he's great. This should be awesome. But like in hindsight, we're not fucking Van Halen. Like, <laughs> like not too many people can successfully just get a new singer and be like, here's our new songs. I think even outside of that, it was like the sound of the band changed a lot. Like I think oh, the band and Bricks, you could, you could yeah. say that was my thought on it. It's like, we kind of just tried to change everything. And the label was like, what? exactly are you guys doing right now and that was kind of the vibe <laughs> yeah. i got i remember being i was on a call with fearless with todd and bob both of them and they were like so we heard the demos they sound awesome but this is a totally different band like can you do you guys want to change your name like i'm like and of course me i was 20 at the time I'm like no what are you talking about the fully down is a you know global brand it's household name <laughs> 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 yeah um, but they, they absolutely had a point. And I think the songs were a lot better. They were a lot more cohesive because the stuff that we wrote on the, um, don't get lost in a movement album was like the more is more philosophy. Like Wilhelm mm-hmm. scream coined that for, or they taught, taught to us about that actually on the tour that we were on together. They were like, yeah, we took the right. more is more approach. And we're like, yeah, great idea. So we're going to toss a million guitars on it. I got to do a million yeah. fills over a million guitars. And it just, we listen back to it now and it's like, there's so much song here going, there's so many changes in so many different directions. It makes no sense just for the sake of doing it. Right. So the, I think the last stuff that we did with Justin was by far the best stuff that we did, but yeah, I never saw the line of day. Well, I think it's on Instagram. So it now. never came out. Like that's what I was, I was really thinking it's, that like, it's on an Instagram page right now. Like, like parks was like, we got to have people hear this. So it's like, there's like a couple hundred people on Instagram that might, might hear it. If you go to the Instagram platform and sit through a, what three minute reel or something i'll say though like towards the end george like because everyone was kind of doing their own writing but like george at the end he did some demos and i was just like well shit man if those would have been the first ones that we put out like it, i i honestly think it would have been a totally different story because oh, it was really? a mix of still the shreddy guitars but it was still like you know catchy hooks and choruses and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I was going to say, knowing George, it's got pop sensibility like crazy, yeah. man. He's got an ear yeah. for that kind of thing. And he was out with you guys at the time. Like, yeah, was I was, out I was right... wondering if that might have had anything yeah. to do with it. <laughs> he was out with you guys, and then he was like, I got these demos, and I was just like, yeah, that that would have been great like six months ago before the <laughs> label dropped this. <laughs> Thanks for getting them over now. I'll, I'll record them in your house and like, you know see what happens with it which is nothing. yeah we kind of nabbed george from you to do sound for us and then parkway drive nabbed him so much harder yeah <laughs> oh yeah they got their hooks in him big time yeah um uh bricks you've toured with wilhelm and pth together yeah that was an awesome tour aside from um, when our van broke down yeah. what what was it like, the dichotomy <clears throat> of Nuno's, like, boundless positivity and Rhodey's endless negativity? <laughs> like, w- what was that like, being around, like, the most positive dude in the world and just, like, the worst human? You know, Rhodey does have that persona about him, perhaps, but I feel yeah. like... Aud- <laughs> You know, he's known as a terrible person. Everybody knows yes. it. I was the name for the worst, worst dude running. Uh, <laughs> but no, honestly, on tour, Rhodey was like, I just remember him just being like the most generous, 
dude like inclusive dude to be around like he was just awesome dude to hang out with all the time <laughs> i have no Woo-hoo! bad stuff to say about Rody. it's terrible uh, i should have thought up terrible shit to say yeah um but no Rody was a blast to hang out with on tour it was great um that that tour feels like to me you guys joined it you played one show your van broke down and we didn't see it to the end <laughs> it really feels <laughs> like and you guys like got real bone hard. On. It was so much fun. Those like four shows that we played were banging shows. <laughs> it was fun as fuck. I think the band The Spill Canvas was on that tour as well, weren't they? They were. Which were like a hyper pop band. I fucking, after that tour, I fell in love with that band. I really did. Um, still to this day, I fucking. I don't think I got to see them well, play live once because we weren't around. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're on the tour because I looked at the tour pass afterwards. That's my like. I, I was technically on the tour. That yeah, was they funny like, though. Uh, so Gab played Gab. He yeah. played the show acoustic in Timmins, I think. Right? Yeah, was, I thought he played a couple of them that way. Yeah, maybe in London too or something. So, Man, do you know why game. he was out there for those shows? No. Oh we, yeah, because he came separate. He came separate. Yeah, because we, we were stuck in Calgary with our van. Um, mm-hmm. So we so Gab flew out and did a couple shows acoustic. Uh, and it was, you know, we, we had built it as, you know what, we want to make sure that we've got a presence there, get Gab out there to, to sing the songs and do, you know, do the fan thing, whatever. But on the tour previous to that, we were in London, Ontario, and he wound up getting picked up for shoplifting in a no frills. And he had a cork <laughs> dish. <laughs> So we had to to fly out to Ontario anyways. So we told the label, like, yeah, you know, we're doing everything that we can. We just want to make this tour work. We're going to get Gab out there to do acoustic. (laughs) Wow. That was really impressive. It was was the dumbest thing, too. It was like he he owed Dan Hay a battery for a guitar pedal, and those things are like $1,000. And when you're living off $0 in a van, it was like – so he needed to he needed to give him a battery or else he wouldn't have a pedal for the show and he had no money. So it's like, you know, Aladdin got to still live, got to you know, got to still eat, got to eat to live. It was like, yeah, that was kind of. Dan it. was fucking collecting on those. Oh fucking, yeah. Holy shit, collecting on his debts. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, Dan's a big guy too. Like Gab was in true. shape, but Dan was a hulking man at that time. Yeah, and still. And still. I shared a, a bed with guy. him once. Oh, he's really hot. Um, so yeah, <laughs> you, you it got also... quiet. Everyone was just legitimately thinking about how hot Dan is. Right? How hot? Yeah. How hot is Dan? He really is. Um, you also played Warp Tour. Yeah, for two years. Did Did Vans give you free shoes? One time they did, and only one time because so we were in New Orleans, and this was right after Katrina came through in two thousand and four, and so in two thousand and five there was still a bunch of cleanup to do. And so there was Warp Tour, cool guys that they are. They're like, all right, we're sending everybody out on buses to go do cleanup efforts for Katrina, for picking the stuff out of people's yards and whatever. So we're like, yeah, okay, we'll do that. So I get on a bus, go out on some farm somewhere, and I'm pulling a boat, um, like a boat trailer out of a bog covered in mud <laughs> with the um, oh, Travi from Gym Class Heroes and their tour manager. <laughs> Yeah, like only on work tour, right? So we're there yeah. and like we're knee deep in mud in this bog pulling a, a trailer out of the mud and Kevin Lyman is standing behind us. And so the tour manager for gym class here is like, hey, Kevin, we're getting free shoes tomorrow. And he's like, yeah, I guess just go to the tent. We'll give you some shoes. So we went to the Vans <laughs> tent the next day. We're like, yo, Kevin said we got new shoes. They're like, yeah, he told us. But yeah, I think that was the only free Vans that we got and I earned them. Oh. I feel like they used to chuck those slip-ons out like every time you sneeze. You know those like checkerboard slip-ons? Oh yeah, we all I feel have. like I feel like the Vans warp tour like the minimum thing they should do is just like ask every band what their member shoe sizes are and hook everybody up with a pair of shoes. I mean, I mean, you go through shoes so fuck? fast on warp tour cuz you're walking around on concrete and like gravel all summer like You'd go through three pairs of those things. Yeah, dude, I barely wore shoes on the Warp Tour. You wear barely wear shoes now. I'm not wearing shoes right now. <laughs> <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> I don't wear shoes. 
I'm a horny little hobbit, dude. <laughs> um, let's talk about the stuff that we're doing, the new stuff we're doing. So yeah. things kind of fizzle out with the fully down. You get dropped from your label, even though you're probably making your sick of shit, uh, and years go by. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them. <laughs> a lot of them. Yeah. 15. So yeah. what the fuck happens that you guys get back together and start writing some music? Golf. Golf. Golf happened. Yeah, like we, uh, it's funny, Bricks sent me a snippet from 2020, like in the midst of the pandemic, because at the time the Fully Down was like, yeah, let's write some new songs, get them out there. And we were like, yeah. And I was sitting down to write lyrics and I couldn't think of shit. I was, I was just like, what am I going to write songs about? It was just yeah. like, like writer's block to the extreme. I'm sure you have dealt with the same thing. Because okay. I was just like, all right, maybe it'll be a concept record this and that and i sent bricks a text i was like dude i literally can only think of lyrics about golf so i'll just write those and like just for placeholders and then we'll change them later and that was almost like the initial seed that got planted and we're like this is so fucking stupid there's no way we can really do that um and then like we stayed in touch like how you do with like friends like you know you text a couple times a year stuff like that and then i understand that friends do that (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and then i think what was it 21 bricks that we went on the first golf trip yeah yeah so we just now we go we like we started going on a yearly golf trip in 21 and then a couple years into that we just started joking on the course and we were like just singing songs about golf and we were like dude this is really dumb but it could be a lot of fun Man. and then bricks kind of was i would say pushing it and then finally i just got my shit together and like got stuff I need to record and yeah, here we are. So what, what Justin is saying is the fully down almost made a full blown comeback, but Justin <laughs> turned into a golf man. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it is just the two of you. It's none yeah, of the yeah. other guys in the fully down were fully down or in any way down with this golf right, concept. Cause they went golf. What are you talking about? Well, it's not, it's not all their fault. Cause we have a rule in the band that you're, you have to maintain at least a 20 handicap or lower in order to remain Whoa. in the band. And so none of them had a registered handicap or golf. So there were, I mean, it was out of our hands. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't get in. And that was with bait. Like I played bass in my first band when I was like 16 and then we were like writing this record and like, you know, Cam would have been down, but we were just like, I don't think Cam has a handicap registered. And like we had serious talks about like, I don't think he could do it. So I was just like, all right, I'm going to have to figure out how to play bass again. So that rule is hard and fast. You're not joking yeah. about it. Like you're saying it with a laugh, but. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's it. And, yeah, and what... I mean, we got to maintain street credibility. In the golf streets, <laughs> in the clubhouses. <laughs> in the golf streets. Do you How guys are need to get like seriously? A, you guys need to get like a serious cameo of like Rory McIlroy. Is that his name, Rory McIlroy? Yeah, McIlroy. Oh, yeah. Wow, what a good job I've done. Um, do you need to get like a real serious fucking cameo of one of those motherfuckers, a pro, maybe even that other McIlroy, like the tennis guy? Uh, <laughs> if he's you know, got twenty handicap or less. You know who's who's a real good golfer that you could probably get. I mean, uh, is the the dude from Hootie and the Blowfish? Oh, he lives in my city. Yeah, they I played at his course. A, the course he's a member at a few times. Yeah. It's incredible. That I have a great a... story about him being a real dick to a little kid. No, <laughs> That's true. really. Yes. What happened? <laughs> Darius so, say it ain't yeah. so. Yeah. No, it's it's not Darius's fault. The kid called him Hootie and the Blowfish. He said, hey, Hootie, it's over here. Isn't this right, Fritzy? Yeah, he basically said, hey, Hootie, can I get an autograph? And Darius turned to him and just said, who the fuck is Hootie? And walked yeah. away. <laughs> I don't think how that's that bad. Was, how old was this child? Like 10. Okay, that's not, I mean, I was going to say That's the worst 16. age. That's the worst age. I want to be rude to 10 year olds. Stop sticking up for Darius Rucker. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. This kid knew what Darius Rucker look looked like well enough you to call never... him Hootie. And <laughs> you're going to tell me he yeah. didn't know that his name was Darius? Probably kid was not. being a prick. It was 1996. He knew what he looked like. Wait, so were you just in the same room or how did you hear about it? I was, I was at the. It was at a golf tournament. 
at uh, like a pro am that uh, Peter Jacobson um, held in Portland every year, and um, Darius was playing in the pro am, and we were he was playing in uh, Peter Jacobson's foursome. And so we were following Peter Jacobson because his daughter and my little brother were in school together. They were friends. So we um, just were following that group. And it just happened like right in front of me, like between uh, a green and a, and a tee box. It sounds yeah. like you're re- like reliving this for like a police like stenographer mm-hmm. to take down the the details. Yeah. Oh no, it <laughs> like, is it has so, colored my perception of Darius Rucker from that point forward. Yeah, but um, only for the positive. He can't redeem himself. Oh golly! No. No. I mean, you listen, you 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 put on cracked rear view and listen to that record, and you're going to change your tune real nope. quick because that is an absolute. Yeah, it is. It's. Jam. It, it's wonderful. That was one of the first pieces of music I bought as a young lad. If we're really getting wow. into it. After the so, Lion King soundtrack. <laughs> so, Justin, you, you're from Detroit. I am. Now, are you from Detroit or are you from Detroit? I'm from... I'm from where? Detroit, but I'm from Detroit. Yeah, same. I'm from Detroit. I grew up downriver. Taylor. Okay. So, I, I live in Ipsy. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you're not so too far. Not too far. Um, too far from the I'm a little closer than you. Ypsilante. Um, did you move to Canada to play? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, well, I had seen the Fully Down come through Detroit in 2005. Saw them play, and then that was about the time where I was like, give. I wouldn't say giving up on music, but I was just like, man, this is just not happening for me. And then uh, they had a tryout for a singer. And that was a song wrote he was talking about. So I just was like, all right, let's just give it a shot. And then I ended up living in Ottawa for, well, unless immigration's listening, but at the, <laughs> I ended up living in Ottawa for like four and a half years. I always made a joke about that. I was like, you have a Mexican living illegally across the border into Canada. That's not really how the stereotype works. Uh, but no, I lived there for four and a half years. And then, uh, yeah, in once the, the most, band fizzled out, I just... It, Justin yeah. lived in the most hilarious of conditions, too, when he lived there. Like, <laughs> he was living like an illegal immigrant that we had smuggled over and were hiding. Tell him about where you lived at Dan's house. Because he lived at oh, Dan's man. house. Oh, man. So Dan's house, year. I lived in, with Dan for a little while. And keep in mind, like, you're we're young. You're yeah. drinking a lot. Yeah. You're just doing whatever. Um, so Dan needed a little privacy in his downstairs room and in the basement, they had their laundry room and there was probably an eight by eight section in the back of the laundry room. So I could fit a twin bed in there. It was a furnace room. It was a furnace furnace room. room. Oh, fuck. (laughs) I remember I took my wife there. We went to see Dan one Christmas and I was like, do you want to see where I used to live? And I took her down there and she was just like, babe, this is. This is not cool. Because <laughs> like, yeah. so Dan bought his he bought his parents' house. Yeah. So at the time that was, the same place. it was his parents' house, but he's still there now. Yeah. He's yeah. still there now. Yeah. <laughs> he bought it from from his mom. But they, I mean she was awesome. She was nice enough to let me live there. But when you're that young and stupid, you don't think much of it. Yeah. I was okay. just like, oh cool. But it like when you think of now that I'm older, like his mom must have been like, What am, what is happening right now? <laughs> There's yeah. a strange man living in my furnace room. <laughs> yeah. Were you not like scared of getting deported? Like you had like a job and shit, oh, didn't you? Dude. Wait, are well, we allowed I, to talk about this? Like, would, can you retroactively get in shit? I don't think. I mean, I don't think so. <laughs> dude, I'll tell you. You want to? Well, I mean, all they would do is deport you, right? Or maybe tax you a little. I don't know. It was. It's not like I ever made money, and that's all they cared about. So Everything I, you made, you were pumping room back room into was, the economy. What's yeah, that? He wasn't banking millions living in a furnace room. Well, yeah. that's the no, thing. Though, I everything you were making, you were putting right back into the economy via yeah. alcohol. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alcohol. yeah. But like I would cross the border and it would pretty much be like, hey, what are you going to Canada for? And like you're on the Canada side, I'm like, oh, hey, how you doing there, bud? Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to record some songs with my friends. Like, all right, come on in. And then I'd be there, you know, I'd be in Canada. Like you have to cross the, like on a, as a visitor from the States, you mm-hmm. have six months. So I would make sure to cross the border every six months. So when I was coming back in the States, they were just like, what, what are you, what are you, what are you? 
they were like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm just bumming around, hanging out. And they're like, all right, well, come back in. And then I'd be in Detroit for like five days and then cross again. And they like, hey, welcome back. Come on in. <laughs> it yeah. it yeah, is true. Right where like, you left it. Go, yeah. Going into Canada, they're the nicest. They're so much So nicer. welcoming. And then coming into the U.S., even as a U.S. citizen, they're like, I don't believe you're who you say you are. Yeah. We Take had a your good pants off. George. We're going to search you. Dude, there was one time where I actually crossed, and it was when, because I think they loosened up on some of the uh, touring van rules, didn't they, Rody? Like, do you I, have to go through? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I feel like sometimes when we're on the bandwagon or like a bus, they're usually they're like, they might pull you in, they might not. And yeah. sometimes you just like wake up in the States. So, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. well, there, well, there was a time where like they, they were like, you know, they had me, pulled me over. Cause every now and then they would, they search your stuff. And it was back when your tour dates were on MySpace. Oh yeah. And for whatever reason that day, there was a glitch in MySpace. So they, they were like, oh, you're going to record while well, we see you're playing shows here. And I was like, uh, am I? Maybe I am. <laughs> but there was a glitch in MySpace that day where all it showed were dates and cities. It didn't have yeah. venues listed oh, for some fuck. reason. Or, so yeah, yeah. if there were, they were like, if there were venues here, they were like, we would have denied you entry and you wouldn't be able to cross for two years. And I was just like, <laughs> like so, so that was like step one of being like, I can't, what am I doing? And it's not like the band's making enough money to like get it set up legit. So Dude, they love kinda... saying like scary shit to you. Yeah. They really one time do. they found like a fuck ton of money that we were trying not to pay tax on. <laughs> 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 and they were like, we're thinking about keeping it. And we're just going like, oh, no. Like, they didn't. They just, like, taxed us. But, like, they, they love to say, like, scary stuff. Mm -hmm. To be like, we can do whatever the fuck we want. It's like, man, I guess so. <laughs> it, yeah, they fuck uh, with people for, for, like, for, for pleasure there. A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent they do. It's a power trip. Like, they get had, off on so it. When, when we crossed the border one time, I forget where it was, but it was definitely going to the U.S. And Dan Hay, again, um, there was somebody else in namesake named Dan Hay. And so they're giving everybody the business, right? And they pull Dan aside. They're like, you go by any other names? You go by Dickhead? You go by, like, Moron? Like, they like every, like every they were just making up shit to call him, like, you know, yeah. make fun of him. Apparently there was some other criminal named Dan Hay, but they just like berated Dan in a corner room for like 30 minutes asking him if he was a moron. I, yeah. I'm I got a, a buddy problem. named Mike Smith. Every time he goes through fucking immigration, it's just like there's always one Mike Smith that they're looking for. Yeah. There's such yeah. a fucking generic name. <laughs> yeah, you got to change that Yeah, you come back out. to Canada. When, when we were coming back through Warp Tour, um, it was the end of the tour, and a guy's like, "Hey, so where are you guys, you know, coming back from?" I'm like, "Oh, we're just back from work." He's like, "Oh man, Bad Religion played on it this year, right?" We're like, "Yeah, yeah it did." Yeah. He's like, "Awesome, come on back." And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, the luck of the draw. Uh, Justin, uh, the the majors website says that you fell in love with golf at age twenty six. Now I'm I'm gonna. It doesn't go into any more detail than that, but I. I know what happened. So I'm going to tell, I'm going to lay it out for everybody about how you fell in love with golf at age 26. So that was the year you got your first office job. And Brent, the coolest and onlyest guy your age in the office, was super big into golf. And you were feeling a little locked in at home. Your significant other at the time was super into like refurbishing garage sale furniture from Craigslist. And you were like, I got to get out of the house and I don't know anybody. I just moved to North Carolina and, <laughs> and Brent seems kind of cool and he thinks golf is great. And he's like, you should come out with me sometime and we'll drink beers and we'll play golf and it'll be awesome. And you were like, ah, all right. And then you went out and you were just hooked and you fell into Brent's friend group. And then you started playing every weekend. And then you started playing in league nights. And then you started playing like, Oh, it's Monday night. I got to get to the range. And then you're never home. And, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> in actuality, I was in Canada still. 
Mm. You really I, I think a lot of it correlated with uh, not doing music anymore. I was just like, oh, and another buddy. Me, I broke up with, I was single, so was another buddy. Mm. And it was, it was just like the perfect storm of like, we have no, we have no one to report to. We would just play 36 holes a day. Yeah. Like three days a week. We play 18 every day. But then there was like three days a week where we played 36. It was absolute. There was one night we were out all night at the bar. And that's when I knew. I was like, dude, you got a problem. So we stayed up all night. We're at a diner in Ottawa after the bar. And I was just like, dude, we could make a 615 tea time right now. And we just drove to the golf course, played 18 holes. And I still wanted to play another 18 after we did that one. That for the first few years, I, I mean, played an ungodly amount of golf. So bad. You so must be bad. pretty fucking good at it. You would think, but I'm not. And that <laughs> I think that's why everyone plays golf. I'm still just so bad. Like it's I got to say, I personally I fucking hate golf. I <laughs> I hate everything about it. Uh, to the point where I don't like your band. Uh, <laughs> I just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love the band. I just can't relate to the lyrics. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I golfed like 3 times in my life. And it's like, I just ended up getting like hammered drunk and the like Marshall guys following me around the whole time being like, chill the fuck out, buddy. And it's like, I don't want to do it. I don't like it. <laughs> you say um, that, but you come down and play. Bricks, you what's your excuse? I'll try. How did you find golf? I don't even know, honestly. Now you're talking about the Justin story. I literally think that a, a buddy of mine. Right around the same time. Yeah, probably around the same time. I started like eight or nine years ago, I think. And yeah, my buddy Mike was like, man, you should start playing golf with me. And I was like, okay. And so I came out, gave it a try. I had some clubs just kicking around. You know, I'm a white man. I've got golf clubs. It's just like something yeah, you're born with, you know. <laughs> um, yep. And, you know, so I got my white guy golf clubs for my, you know, kit that we get at the hospital when we're born. Right. And yep. uh, yeah, so and then I just played. And I was like, I guess this is my life now. I'm like, this is now this is what I do. And yeah, I'm playing like 50 rounds a year at least. And I'm no, and I'm not I, um... good either. <laughs> but what did you say? You guys have a very specific handicap. It was th- 20. three. What does that mean? That well, so the handicap. That's how is... unfamiliar I am with golf. Is I need to. You basically knows get handicap. nobody knows. That's why. I, I, can... Well, you you get your last 20 rounds. And then your handicap is based off your best eight scores from your last 20 rounds. And it gives you an average. So I'm like a, an 11 right now. So that means if I play my, uh, and that's, and everyone who golfs is going to laugh at that. Be like, you've been playing for 14 years and you're an 11, but that like, that's basically how it works. So like on a good day, I'll shoot low eighties, but I'll also get out there and shoot a one Oh five. It just depends on what the golf gods give me that day. Okay. Yeah. And so the idea, right, with handicap is it allows you to sort of level the playing field with people of different skill levels can play around competitively with each other. Gambling. Uh, Yeah. Big thing, too. Uh, Where it it levels out, like, because your handicap. So you get strokes off your score based on your handicap versus other people. Like you could, I could go play against a professional golfer and it would be a fun match with my okay. 11 handicap and their plus seven. Right. Wow. Brody, I can see your gears. You want to do it. You want to do it. I can <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. What's happening to me is there is a fly in the room and it's landed on the computer. <laughs> I tried to kill it with my hat earlier. And I'm tried to kill about, it with my bare feet. I'm trying to swing my hat. I'm thinking about swinging my hat at it again, but it's on my computer screen. I'm going to do it. I wanted to just walk across the camera lens real bad. Swag. Did you get it? I don't know. I'm, I don't know. We're not editing this out either, by the way. <laughs> this stays no, we in. don't edit our podcast. <laughs> I'm kidding. Care. I don't got that kind of time. Um, so uh, I did share the song Addiction with um, a golf widow friend of mine uh, from work. A golf widow? Yeah. The, the, the Basically, the wives of people who play... Uh, ridiculous amounts of golf are basically golf widows because they're... Oh, okay. I thought you were... Lit- I thought this was a literal widow. And I'm like, this song is about, like, 
abandoning your family for golf. Yeah. How are you going to do that to a widow <laughs> who's... <laughs> I thought you that oh. You scared so, me, Fritzy. I thought you'd reached a whole new level of evil. <laughs> no, she uh, she related very uh, strongly to that song, and um, uh, and then made the comment that uh, her husband has been called by people that know their family, the only guy that they know that can make six figures and always be broke, because oh, wow. he spends That's- so much money on golf. That he is always broke. Wow. That seems completely yeah. reasonable Happy. to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like like... <laughs> but do you feel like she was kind of like flex on you a little bit? Like she was being like, just so you know, my husband makes six figures. Like no, that was, she I... was just trying to tell you that. She'd be like, it could be 100000 could be fucking 500000 No, I know exactly how much he makes. I'm sorry. Oh, oh. <laughs> Fritzy's flexing. Right? No, we. I mean, actually, I used to. A, I'm actually. I'm I actually used to boss. work with Nobody. the guy. I know, like, I know what he's doing. Um, wait, so was, were you, did you makes, say that you're peers? Sense. Huh? We're peers. Yeah, we would. I would say we we're peers. Holy fuck, Rody, We want to see your W two. Just put it on the camera. That's what. That's what. That's what. I, I said, Rody. Fritzy. Fritzy. Yeah, <laughs> that's what Rody's say. flirting with. Yeah, I mean, you too, Rody. You're W nine or ten nine, whatever they call him up north. Oh, I don't know. I just send a guy an email every tax season. He goes, "You owe the government. Start paying income tax." <laughs> Remember all that money you thought you had? Yeah, Dude, and I, it's gone. I feel no, like if that's anyone the from opposite. the government stumbles across this. That was the opposite this year. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought I made zero zero dollars, and then I made more than I thought I did. But then I also didn't pay any income tax on it, so I had to pay the government a fucking huge chunk of money. <laughs> a huge by my standard, which is quite itsy bitsy. However, though, that whole free healthcare thing—that's pretty yeah. sick. It's it's pretty for now, sick. <laughs> we're still doing it for now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm a recovering golfer. I grew up in a golf family. Um. I spent my summers at the country club, um, at the driving range, and that's how you on know he putting makes money. He spent his summers at the golf club. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was it was bad. Like I was on the club golf team. I I played a lot of golf as a kid. Um, and then when did you lose your virginity? Not until <laughs> very late, <laughs> like just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, the um been I've been clean for years. <laughs> I said weeks. I know, but that's the funny part. You've been married for years and Oh yeah. You finally got laid. <laughs> <laughs> the, se- the secret is it wasn't my wife. Um uh Hi <laughs> uh old Lattice Bezelforth. Um <clears throat> that's funny. Uh so I've been off golf for about twenty years now. I'm an old man. Um and uh but like 10 years ago, my mom was moving and she didn't want to like move a bunch of my old shit. So she like got a moving van, like hired a moving van and sent a whole bunch of stuff to my house in Michigan. And uh, one of the things in it was my golf clubs. And um, I opened my golf bag and in my golf bag are my golf spikes. And I put them on. They still fit. They were great. <sighs> And then I, me I realized, right now. I realized I can't wear these anywhere. I can't play in them. They're metal. Nobody allows metal spikes anymore. And that made me realize I don't ever want to play golf anymore because it sounds different. You don't hear that metal crunching, grinding on the cart path of golf, metal golf spikes or in the parking lot. You don't hear it anymore. And, uh, uh, and, and like, plastic spikes don't grip anything so what's the point just wear tennis shoes that's a good point i was no <laughs> point <laughs> like, you Should really we just quit, yeah yeah I just mean, quit good point. well also i, I don't, don't like the, i don't like the shoes so i'm done yeah, with done. this stupid game also i don't understand putting anymore since i quit golf putting has changed an awful lot uh vj singh did the whole like two handy putts Mm-hmm. You know, like the split grip, two hand, and now that's gone. And now you've got like what, like the forearm lock putter guys that like, and and everybody's putter grip is like 
this big around. It's like so girthy now. You're putting a, it doesn't make any sense. Takes your hands out of it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. That, that's how you pull and push, man. No. You got to have a big fat grip. No. Dude, I'm still trying to fucking figure out the like Darth Maul one you were talking about. Yeah, just go was watch that... a video of VJ Singh putting. Was was he holding two putters? No, it was just one. Super long one. Super duper and he long had his hands with like, like split What a grips. swing on that guy. Uh, I'm confused by that. They outlawed oh. that, right? You can't do that anymore? Anchoring. You would see guys like anchor it to their chest. Yeah. Like the butt end. That's that's not allowed anymore. Uh, so it was probably lock. it was probably too effective. Yeah. Like people were just like killing it and they were like, nah, we need to make this game shittier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This game's not hard enough. Right. Yeah. It's like the hardest game ever. It's really bad. It's it really, really bad. is. <clears throat> um So Fritzy though, wait a second. So you're yeah. telling me you had the dream, right? Because Justin and I growing up like well growing up we didn't know any better but now we started in our late 20s we're like the only thing that i wish for if i had a time machine you know those memes like you know yeah time machine go back to meet your great grandparents or whatever like i would start golf when i was five like that's what i would do because i would be amazing right now yeah no it's it's, i think the problem is like you guys so wait you guys came up you got a time machine wait a second here you got a time machine and you're not gonna (laughs) You're not going to go kill Hitler? You're not going to kill Hitler. That's it. <laughs> You're no, gonna... I'm going to get my handicap down to single digits. At least. You're not going to put like any money on Apple when it costs like nothing? <laughs> like, there's so it. many I'll things you can do. Way, You're going to try I and introduce... I will be a professional golfer. I'll be You're printing gonna... money. You're going to try and introduce your like toddling self to golf, and you're going to look at yourself and go, no fucking way. I hate this. You're going to hate it until you're 28. You're not going to change anything. That is, you do make a good point. Cause I, I, like, I wonder if like the love that we have for it and like the insanity that we have for it is because we did start as at a much later age where yeah. I feel like a lot of those kids be like, their parents are like, you got to get better. You got to oh, do this. God, you it was do awful. This. I was just playing some mediocre basketball, having a blast. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's kind of how I felt about <laughs> hockey when I was younger. Like I played hockey at a pretty high level for a while. And then by the end of it, when I was 15, I was like, I feel like I'm out here like as a gladiator for all of the parents to just watch me kick the shit out of other kids. And like, this is just not fun anymore. Like I'm not into this. Yeah. So then I joined humble a rock brag, band. Humble brag, humble <laughs> brag. <laughs> I was pretty much the best 15-year-old in the country. I mean, no, you know, not. I all mean, the not. parents That's are just really watching exactly. you. <laughs> Just ragdolling kids in the midget. <laughs> I know you quit because you probably just wanted to go hack darts and drink booze. You know what? There's some truth to that. Yeah. You wanted to put like a red streak in your hair. <laughs> you saw what my hair looked like for a period of time. Of course, of course. Oh my god. It was sick. So you know what? The, when I I never did that again, and the reason why, so Justin, everybody's seen, but it's like the one picture of me that survives on the internet from that era is when I have a blonde streak here, and the whole other side of my head is blonde. Brilliant idea. That aged awesome. But It looked I sick. Was I, like, I remember at the time just being like, Bricks looks fucking tight. <laughs> <laughs> we all did. I rolled into Starbucks in Canada, and everybody is like, who is this guy? He, like, please, panties dropping everywhere. Um, yeah. But what, <laughs> they were just throwing him at me at the Starbucks. Uh, so I sat down for like some lunch at some buffet somewhere, and I turn around, and there's this 60-year-old woman who has the identical haircut to me. Identical. With the streak like this and the whole blonde on the side, and we both looked at each other, and like neither of us was happy about what we saw. <laughs> uh, Did you just give her a fist bump? Yeah. Never again. That is we both just knew like this territory. wasn't the look we were going for. <laughs> yeah. So that was my so last that was my last hair dye incident. That one. You guys got into golf when uh like you're you, you play golf in an era where uh, a cart is almost like just part of the the story, right? Yeah, you guys, you're yeah, taking carts and... out, right? Got you it. got beers, you got yeah. cigars, got you got like the whole. Nice. That's disgusting. I Let's caught see it in my head. Oh, you did well, get it. Um, Good work. Now eat it. <laughs> ah! No, they're very filthy. <laughs> now what am I gonna do with my hands? <clears throat> and I think part of 
my hatred of golf comes from the you know I was um, it was ingrained in me that you no carts you don't nobody like real golfers don't use carts you carry your own bag yeah. and it's a young man talking and Once then you hit forty and so like the, the thought of trudging around a golf course carrying a golf bag at this point is like I can't do it. I can't do it, but I think the ghost of my father would haunt me if I was like, oh, let me get a cart. We're going to just keep convincing you because like, you know what they sell are push carts. Well, they had the, a, they had the little yeah, the little things. And even that, like my dad, I'd be like, can we get one of those at least? And he was like, I don't know. Like it was a big deal. So it's pretty what you're saying is it's all your fault oh yeah it's all horrible it's not your fault for no i I, 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 a lot of trauma coming out i've been i've been in therapy for years about it um mainly can you in a golf cart can you play music out loud on the course yeah you can but that's i mean there's this new like during covid golf went crazy and there's this new vibe on the course where you have a lot of just like drunk idiots mm. like okay. who just blat <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's cool but it's almost just like the i don't know there's like this almost like bro type culture i feel where people are just getting absolutely smashed which i'm totally cool with you but don't that sound turns that my cool with it <laughs> <laughs> no i'm cool with it until it turns my four hour round into a six hour yeah. round where yeah. I'm just standing behind a bunch of drunks, just like, dude, what are you guys doing right now? But it's all. Yeah, the whole. The last the time I was general, golfing. Sorry, what was that, Bricks? Sorry, oh no, I was just gonna say, like, riff on what Justin was saying. Like, the game uh, since COVID has expanded and it's brought a lot of people in, and I think part of like um, the changing the traditions, right? Not walking, taking a cart, not having to wear like you know pom pom hat, like all this is to grow the game and keep it alive, right? So. Oh, I yeah. think, yeah, I like the traditional side of it. I do enjoy, like, you know, tucking your shirt in when you're <laughs> on the tee box and, you know, a little bit of, you know, um, decorum. Je quoi. Yeah. Decorum, As we have yeah. a punk yeah. rock band about yeah. golf. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I like sticking to the tradition. <laughs> you yeah. like keeping the proletariat out. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, there's something to be said for that. But it is nice that it's that it's growing. And it's getting a little bit more casual, I think. And that you know, hopefully, we're banking on those like 20 people who really got into golf in the pandemic, like who like punk rock, to be our entire fan base. So we're, yeah. we're banking dozens, dozens. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, are you guys ready, golf guys, or do you like you play away and play honors and all that? Or what does golf? it mean? What does this mean? I love I love having a conversation where Rody has no clue what's going on. It feels real. Good. I hate it. I hate it. I'm ready golf for everything outside of putts. I'd say like once you get on the green, yeah. Then you're like, Rody, whoever's the furthest away goes goes first when you're putting. Okay, yeah, I I know that yeah. from Mario Golf. There you go. So that's yeah. it. Same but rules. I don't. I'm not a stickler on honors on the tee box and stuff like that. It's like if you're ready, just go. Unless somebody of gets course. a birdie and it's been a while, then we'll let them have honors yeah. just as a little celebration for them, you know, like a little reward. Yeah, I, I am, I, I, I'm more traditional. I think ready golf is dumb. I think you should have honors in the tee box. <laughs> Everybody, you should play away at all times, no matter where you are. And if you didn't plan on spending the entire day on the golf course, you shouldn't have booked that tee time. Dude, what is honors? <sighs> honors in the tee box. <laughs> The person no, with don't, the best. Don't even tell me. Don't even tell okay. me. I don't care. Okay. I don't even want to know. I'm gonna just write it down and I'm gonna try and shoehorn it into fucking. Stuff. In your head right now, you're like, "What was I thinking? Having this? <laughs> no, I'm delighted. Talking golf this long on my podcast. Oh, I'm it's delighted great. to have you guys here, but I hate golf. <laughs> I am gonna write down. I'm gonna write down. Do honors, some research. Honors in the tea box. Yep. Now, I am writing it on the lyric sheet for the new Protest of the Hero stuff, and I'm going to try and shoehorn it into this song. <laughs> that would be so funny oh, if you were just like, you know what? Protest's next record's going to be about golf, and we just you just buried us. <laughs> 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 I just feel like I got a new concept, dudes. Yeah. It's like, 
Yeah, I wouldn't even know what to say. Just honors in the tee box over and over again. Mm-hmm. Honestly, last but time you I just was started, something. started quiet. Right, start yeah. it quiet and build it into like just a a huge scream. You know what I mean? I can't scream. But yeah, the last time I was golfing, um, I got drunk and lost my phone somewhere in the like. Mm, where's the like long part of the thing? What's it the called? Fairway. That's what? one. Um, and so I had someone else's phone punched in my find my iPhone shit, and I was like had some guy driving me around in a golf cart looking for it because I needed to be looking at the thing. And these motherfuckers behind us started screaming at me about because they thought I was playing uh, Pokemon Go was very big at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and they thought I was playing Pokemon Go and they started screaming at me and I also started screaming. <laughs> like I was just like drunk and like mad because I was golfing and mad because I lost my phone. And then these guys are going, if you're playing Pokemon Go, I'm going to beat your ass. I'm being like, this is a fucking game. This is a stupid fucking game and you're wasting your fucking money. You're screaming at me? You want to fight me? I wish I was playing Pokemon Go rather than golf. I wish. <laughs> anyway, I found my phone. It was like in the middle of the fairway, but <laughs> I got it back. But those guys made me hate golf. I think they just took it. I think I'm more curious on how, how did you, if you, the hatred for golf is so deep. How, how did you get out there? What were you doing? It was my brother-in-law's bachelor party. Ah, mm. that'll yeah. do it. Yeah, I'll get yeah. you. That's, you know what? In the two occasions that I've golfed in my life, it's both been for celebrations of my brother-in-law who I love very much, but uh, don't love enough to golf ever again. Hmm. Twice um, is that's the amount of love I have for him. Two, two golfs. Two, two golfs. <laughs> two, two golfs. Two golfs worth. Um, how that's do you guys practice? Tell us how you practice. That's a good question. Not golf. Uh, music. How do you rehearse? How do you get together? How does it work? And can we see a little? <laughs> 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 It's a weird, it's like, we don't, first of all, we don't sit down and like jam at the same time remotely. I think we could, but we, it's more about the songwriting process and, and working out ideas together. So we have, so we use studio one, which has an awesome, uh, interactive feature where you can, I don't know if other DAWs have this, but I can have a session in Studio One, upload it to the cloud, and share it with Justin. And then he can just pull the the session into his into his DAW and opens up the exact same session, edit it, send it back and forth as much as we want, which right. is awesome. That's like with all yeah. the automation, all the plugins, everything. As long as we both have the same plugins, it's it's good. So that was perfect for writing the album and doing uh, you know ideas and takes back and forth because I would write something, send it over to him, he would work on it while I was working on something else. So. Yeah, and then the other thing that we did is we set up a uh, remote desktop. So we only did it a few times, but Justin would have, he would be in his vocal booth and I would be on a remote desktop on his computer and I would be engineering the session from my basement here in Ottawa oh, while he cool. was singing in Charleston, which was pretty cool. Whoa. That's yeah. That's fucking wild. Yeah. It was, that... it was cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like pretty it's, cool. we're pretty cool guys. it's <laughs> <laughs> or i would just have like a like a you know a melody or like a thing that would get in my head and then i would just record the vo- voice memo send it to bricks and then he would put it in studio one and just like write a song around it cool. and so it's yeah it's pretty neat yeah the, the first song it's crazy the first song that we did, Golf Gods, Justin just had um, a melody idea, and he just sang it into his phone, sent it to me, and I'm like, cool, this is a wicked melody, I'll write a song around it. And so I actually wrote like a country-sounding chorus to it. So we were almost a country band, but then... <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, country is way more popular, pro- and probably especially amongst golfers. Yeah, but we don't want to make money. That's... Oh. Yeah. We're traditional. We want... We're traditional musicians. Like yeah. Richie, two hundred followers on Instagram. Musician. I feel like I feel like golf. The like jazz and classical music are the music of golf. But maybe that's just because that's what my dad yeah, always has been to. out there lately. Yeah, it's a lot of WGCs out there on the golf course. Like your classic 
classic rock stuff is what I hear a lot of the time. And then uh, when the youngsters get out by well, themselves, I live, in, in I live in the South, so it's oh, all country. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I feel like Morgan Wallen is a pretty popular artist amongst golfers. Yeah. Uh, you sure know what? He's a pretty okay. popular artist in general. He's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's um, summertime. I have, uh, I have a game. Me too. For Ooh, us to play. I love okay. games. Okay. Um, um, I'm going to move this next thing that I had. I want to move it to the end because I want to close with it. But this game, um, <clears throat> since uh, th- since your band is called Majors, uh, we're going to talk about Majors winners during the peak of PGA golf, the 1980s. <sighs> the greatest <sighs> decade of PGA golf of all time. Wow. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the top three Majors winners... Of the 1980s, can you name them and how many majors they each won? What does majors mean? There are four majors each year. There's the U.S. Open, the British Open, the PGA Championship, and the Masters. Those are the four major tournaments each year. I'm familiar with this. This is tennis, yes? Yes. Yep. It's Wimbledon. (laughs) I mean... The Australian Open, the U.S. Open... And what's the other major in tennis? French Open. Did you say French Wimbledon? Open? There you go. There's another. I five. probably can't. I, I feel like Nicholas has got to be up there, though, right? He is He's still rocking it in yes. the eighties. So he is Tom on Watson, the list. maybe. Tom Watson. Tom Watson up there. Yes. Okay. Uh, is there any L's in there? Think, Bryce? Nope. No. That was. I think that was pre. So Tom Watson, Nicholas. Oh, this is gonna kill me. It's not longer because that's a little past his time. Oh, is it couples? Nope. I don't think he. Has I don't any, think yeah. you're gonna get the last one. Oh, but it's a good one. A, can you give me a what the first? Not an American. Letter. So not Lee Trevino. Nope. No, it's not Norman. Can you give me what his first let name? First it letter of his starts first name. with an S. Sebi. Yeah, it is. Maybe it's Sevi Ballesteros. Yeah. Hey, we did it. Tom Watson. Did it. Street. Tom Watson won five majors in the 1980s. Uh, Sevi won four, and Jack won three in the 80s. There we go. Of the 40 majors in the 80s, how many were won by non-American golfers? I feel like this is a trick question, but you just told us Sevy won four. Yeah, Sevy won four. Four? No. It's more than four. I've got no idea. I'll say 29. No way! (laughs) 29 of 40? Come on, baby. USA. I don't know. I feel like it's got to be a wild number. It's 11. 11? Okay. Because the 80s was a little bit pre, like, the the PGA Tour in the 90s and 2000s got much wider, like, British players, Japanese players, like, it opened up quite a bit. And the number of majors won by Americans starting in the 90s, like, rapidly declined. Um Compared to the past. Anyway, um, the most career majors won by anyone is Jack. Uh, who's the winningest non-American? Who's one of the majors? Who's won more majors? Which non-American? Who cares? <laughs> they do. <laughs> Golf fans do. <laughs> I was just watching Rody in the corner. He's like doing his taxes over there. He doesn't give yep. a shit. <laughs> no idea. He's got, he couldn't name a golfer. This is ever? Yeah. <sighs> Who is Rudy Justin, Gobert? You got you to that... carry the team here. All I can do is bomb drives. I got no trivia for golf. I spend my time <laughs> on the course, not in front of the TV. <laughs> wow. I want to say, I don't know if this is going to be right, but is it Gary Player? It is Gary Player. Look yes! at that. That's my horse. That's my yes! man. Um. Uh, the Masters is the newest 
of the majors. It's the most recent to have started. It's also okay. synonymous. Mm-hmm. Masters, I already majors. know this answer. What Maybe year? Same thing. What year did the Masters start? Uh oh, he doesn't know. Are you asking Rody? <laughs> I'm asking <laughs> all of like, you. Um, it's I would say in the 20s. So newer than that, right? Newer than that. Yeah, I feel like it's already been for like 50 years. Very close. Very close. 1934. Okay. The first year all of the right. Masters. Uh, uh, and this next question is about the Masters. Uh, golf is so white and male mm-hmm. that its second most famous golf course, Augusta National, home of the Masters, barred African Americans from being members until what year? It's, I don't know the exact year, but it's like not cool. <laughs> it's got to be a it's like, like, very year. not cool. Like it's like 2004. No, it's not that not cool. 89? It's 1990. Yeah. Like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, like it would probably be in correlation with Tiger Woods. Like Tiger Woods is like going and playing places and then places are like, oh, fuck. <laughs> The best yeah. golfer in the world right now is black. Yeah. We can't keep our racist shit alive. <laughs> like, I, it well, would probably be in direct correlation to his success. Well, uh, get nah. this. Women weren't allowed to be members at Augusta National until what year? That's... This was recent. Um, am I closer on that yeah. one? 2004? 2006? 2018. 2012. Yeah. And it's just because they subscribed to the Aztec calendar. They thought the world was going to end. So they're like, what the fuck? Who cares? Yeah, they're like, we'll, let, we'll let you in next year, gal. You know who they <laughs> let? You know who the first female member was? Annika Sorensen? Condoleezza Rice. Oh. Uh, the most nice. famous golf course in the world is not St. Andrews, and it's not Augusta National. It is what? What are we judging fame by? It just is. It's in Scotland. Whistling Straits. No. Cabot Cliffs. No. Oh. It's that one that Kevin no Wallace's chance. grandparents used to own, the Oshawa Airport <laughs> Golf Course. <laughs> <laughs> Most famous? I mean, yeah. Pebble Beach? It is Pebble Beach. Okay, uh, yeah, I would agree. With, okay. I was gonna and say I was going to say, why is it Pebble? Because I said so. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. Like, who says yeah. what's most famous? Yeah. yeah, how do you quantify that? Because I said, because okay. Pebble Beach is the best. The times are. I have heard of that, so I mean, you're probably fucking right. It is the best golf course. Uh, before we is get to gifts, I have Mario? a question for the two of you. Do you play Texas Rules? I don't know what that is. So, where you put off the fairway? No, Texas Rules is if you are playing from the, um. The men's tees, and your drive doesn't reach the ladies' tees. You have to play the rest of the hole with your dick out. I was just curious if you. Well, I I normally like just I like to play with my dick out the, <laughs> the entire so time. That's just normally that's normally start. <laughs> we got on special pants, no, mate. That's Florida <laughs> yeah. rules. Now, Fritzy, before you go on, yeah, I also have a game. Oh God, okay. Mm. I went to oh, some great trouble. Fritzy. So this is not. Sometimes Fritzy worries that my games are perverse, but this is not. <laughs> they scare me. You guys a lot. write uh, golf themed music, and I wrote a trivia uh, test, a multiple choice qu- t- test about golf themed songs. I don't oh, know how wow. familiar you guys are with other golf themed music, but there is quite a bit of it. <laughs> I didn't hear we go. know there was one song about golf. Outside of, I thought we were in Untapped Market. Fuck, there goes the band. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to be quite surprised by some of the names that you have entered into competition with here. Uh, but let's start. Which song by John Denver humorously explores the challenges and joys of playing golf? Is it A, Tin Cup Chalice, B, 18 Holes, C, Straight Down the Middle, or D, Golf Girl? I'll say Tin Cup Chalice, because that just sounds awesome. It does sound awesome. I'm going to say straight down the middle, all killer, no filler, right to the point. Yeah. It's a B, 18 holes, which also was my nickname in high school. (laughs) (laughs) 
Question two. Which song was created by a group of professional golfers, including Bubba Watson and Ricky Fowler? Uh, golf, golf, golf. That's A. B, Golf Boys 2.0. It's like O-H. Uh, C, Hit It Hard. Or D, Bohemian Golfing Rasp- Rhapsody. Pardon me. Is this real? Those are all yes. terrible. I, know, I actually know the answer to this one, which is very pathetic of my point. You do? Yeah. Because I don't know. Gets it. Oh, I don't know. Take what was the, the the O one? Golf Boys 2.0. That, I'll say that one sounds the dumbest. I'll go with that one. That's it? Yeah. That, that is, that's that's it. That's one. That it is it. It sounds like something yeah. Bubba Watson would, would name a band after. Honestly, I think uh, Bohemian Golfing Rhapsody is the worst one. Yeah, that's a dumb just, name. Yeah. They absolutely just shoehorn the word golfing in that song. <laughs> they didn't change I anything. I didn't want to sewer that too bad because that might wind up in a protest album, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Question three. Which artist sings Hit It Hard, reflecting on personal struggles and his passion for golf? Is it A, Bing Crosby? Two, John Daly. A, two. C, Tom Jones. Or is it four, Gene Krupa? Gene Krupa? Gene Krupa is a drummer. And he's a drummer. Did I say so it wrong? maybe it was Gene Krupa. Maybe it was Gene Krupa. It's John Daly. It's a country record, and I've heard it. <laughs> <laughs> He's absolutely right. <laughs> I was going to okay. do... Um, oh, do you have more? Oh, God, yes. Oh, that was wonderful. only four questions. Keep going. Keep going. That was only three questions. Oh, okay. What is the theme of The Golf Song by The Arrogant Worms? A, a romantic story on a golf course. B, the frustrations and comedic aspects of golf. C, an instrumental piece celebrating golf, or D, a nostalgic look at a golf course. That's a lot of words. I don't know. <laughs> I'll say hero the song. instrumental one. I'll say the instrumental one. That's that, that's safe money. Not so safe because it's B, the frustrations and comedic aspects of golf. If you were familiar with the arrogant worms at all, you'd know they're <laughs> <laughs> silly, silly it's fellas. Sta- it's a staple of their catalog. <laughs> Uh, they also uh, did Give Peas a Chance, which is a play on the Beatles, Give Peace a Chance, but it's about eating your vegetables. Um, which song by Jimmy Buffett relates to leaving behind everyday life for a golfing paradise? Of course, Jimmy Buffett has a golf song. The golf tried. song, 18 Holes, Golf Girl, or Tin Cup Chalice? I'll double down. 18 Tim Holes? Holes. Oh, this. You know what? Bricks, that's a that's a good bet because that's what it is. Nice. Jimmy. I'll do one more. There's too many here. But here we go. Straight down the middle is a classic golf song performed by which legendary crooner? Gene Krupa? No. Bing Crosby, Tom Jones, or John Daly? John Daly is not a legendary crooner. The answer is I'll say the Tom question, Jones. Then. Tom Jones. Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby. That's it. He was the only crew. I was gonna do a, a who said it? Was it was it John Daly or Craig Stadler? Craig Stadler was my favorite golfer when I was a kid. The Walrus. I just killed another fly. Well, this time with my keyboard, not my hand, so I don't have to wash. Gross. Jeez, I sent you a you. gift. Oh. If you oh, want to pull Justin. it up. Actually, guys, um, if you wouldn't pardon the interruption, we actually made a gift for you guys. Oh, Get out of and here. we're hoping. Uh, we I'm did. familiar with with the podcast, and uh, it has some ties to Detroit. I would say. Um, how do you want to do that, Bricks? I've got the link here. I'll send it in the chat, if the chat okay. works. Cool. The chat Holy does smokes. work. There we go. Look at Let that. me know it's if you guys can up. get into that. So, yeah. Google Drive link. This is so jarring. No one's ever given us anything. Except a couple of chuckles. All right. Um, Can I share this in the studio? Let's see if I can share it in the studio. We've always struggled. This is an audio of some kind. Yes, sir. It's a wave. Yeah, it is. Hang on, I'm gonna. It's I'm a high quality audio, only the highest of quality it. for our friend. 
Holy shit. Download. <laughs> you look like you're about to open up a Christmas <laughs> present. <laughs> I'm excited. One of us might have to just play it through our phones into our microphone. Justin, can I you play it through it USB? Here. Ah, that's a great question. I don't know. I've got it right yeah, here. Yeah, probably. All right, One let's see if we can hear I've this. Always struggled Fritz to do. It. I've got it. No, he doesn't. He's listening to it. <laughs> you can't hear it? No. no. This is the thing that we've always struggled to do with this podcast is shit broadcast sound. <laughs> Look at this. I love it. Wait, you couldn't hear that? No. Is it over? Yeah, it was so good. Okay, let me listen to it. Let me listen. All right, to you it. listen to it. Rody and Fritzy, they're passing out gas. Rody and Fritzy, let's see what they get. Not sure if it matters which one of them wins. Cause the best gift that they've ever given is true friendship. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. As- I We're like it try. especially because it seems like you said it. Not sure if it matters which one wins, which would be a good rhyme for friends, like a near rhyme, but you went with friendship, yeah. so it doesn't rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> I love All right, it. here we go. Let's see if you can hear it. No. No. No, it's not there. It's just fun. It's. Yeah, it got no, really no, just staticky. Buzz. Shit. But we'll drop it in and post for sure for everybody. We'll drop it in. It's enjoy. fantastic. But that is fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> and it well, really sucks it. because going into the beginning of the episode, I thought I was a shoe in to win, and now I can't possibly win this week. Um, That's true. Um, it's with because I'm going to vote battle. for that. Yeah, because that one's going to get the vote. Well, let's see what you got me, Fritzy. It's a Photoshop file. It should just oh, be an image. It, it is not, and it won't open on my phone. Are you serious right now? All right, I'll open it. I'm dead serious. I've never been more serious. I'll open I it. Uh, 17 megabytes, Fritzy. Why? Uh, Our last communication on text message was, <laughs> sorry, I would normally give that the appreciation it deserves, but I'm up to my elbows in paper mache. Yeah, why? And you said, Why? And I never responded. And you didn't respond. Because <laughs> I was covered in paper mache. Because you, you don't care for me and you hate me. Oh, because I was quite paper mache. What were you paper mache? A balloon. What does anybody paper mache? What, what are you talking about? Okay, fellas, solve this. If you're going to paper mache something, what are you going to paper mache? I think the balloon is the fundamental beginning point, but now yeah. the question is, what do you make out of the balloon, right? Like that's like a thorax for an ant in the larger paper mache. That's um, a very good point, right? So was yeah. it just a simple balloon with a face on it, or did you make some piece of artwork? Well, right now it's just a paper mache circle, but whatever so my little a... guy wants to turn it into, and I got a feeling it's going to stay as just an unpainted circle. But what is it for? Summer vacation. Just to have? I'm I'm learning that that paper mache is another Canadian word that you guys say funny. What do you guys? How do you say what do you paper say? mache? Paper mache. You I, you say the same. Paper, paper mache. mache. You say paper mache. Yeah, because we're putting a little French on it because it's French as fuck. At least you don't say papier <laughs> mache or whatever the French do. Papier mache. <laughs> so there, Rody. Okay, I actually got it downloaded. Yeah. PTH Detroit Adventures in Photos. Yeah. So, what is it? Protest is coming there's, to Detroit oh, next week. And I thought I would give you uh, a little itinerary and photos of the cool things that you can do when you come to Detroit. Um, yeah. So, the first one is when you're crossing the Ambassador Bridge, you can look uh, to the south and see the almost completed Gordie Howe Bridge. Oh. So, that's one thing you can do. We'll probably be crossing into there in the middle of the night, so obviously. Well, you should wake up and look at it. Um, the okay. next thing you can do um, is you can go to Sweetwater Tavern, and all of you can s- share one plate of chicken wings. So each of you could get one chicken wing. 
I smelled those chicken wings once. They smell good, dude. Um, and then the the third thing you can do in that photo is uh, as you're driving down the freeway on I-94, you can wave as you pass my house. And that's the spot you where you would wave. You your house on the internet? No, that's just a picture of where you would wave f- on the freeway as you're going past where I live. Those are the three things that you can do in Detroit. Dude, there are some people that are horny as fuck for you, and they will find your house <laughs> based on that limited From that photo? information. Yeah, you just dox <laughs> yourself on the yeah, that picture of that bush you just put up. I've doxed myself fucking... so many times. Um, it's yeah, prove it. Tweet you didn't gifts. fucking have your real really name nice. on the internet. What? What's that, bricks? I was just saying, that's a very nice, thoughtful gift for it, too. That's a, yeah. it's a really nice thing for you to do for Rory. That was pretty thoughtful. It wasn't as nice as the song, though. No, it wasn't. It's It was crap. It was a, a yeah, piece of crap. Cool. Was it better than nothing, though? I mean. <laughs> yeah, it was better than nothing. I'm I mean. <laughs> probably not. Probably not better than nothing. It was better than nothing. Um, for sure it was. Guys, when, just is, barely. when does the record come out? August 16th. August 16th. August, we just decided coming. tonight. That's very we soon. We just decided yeah. tonight on August 16th. When did you yeah. drop the second song? Because there's a second signal up there. Single. I can't say uh, single. Last week? On Friday. I think. Last Friday. How do you, It's good yeah. as hell. How do you decide? On which ones to drop? Yeah, and when? Well, we decided, so... <laughs> Did you just roll the dice? You just flip the coin? Like, is it this one or this one? The calendar. Well, we go through a process. We had, like... So, Dean, who mixed and mastered our album, who we worked with oh, forever, Dean Hedgie, George's Chris, brother. Dude? Yeah, Dean Hadji. Like, please, shout out to Dean from the rooftops. This guy made us sound awesome. Oh, you saw, it, like, Justin's recording vocals over there. I'm recording drums in a studio that I built myself. Like, there's a limit to the skill that we have here. And I think we'll all agree that Dean made this album sound like top 40 radio magic. Like it sounds so good. Oh, it sounds Um, really good. mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. All credit to Dean. But, uh, so when we were trying to think of a single, it was just me and Justin and we're like, we've heard the song 8 billion times. We have no idea what's good anymore. Right. Uh, so we, we put three into a, into a folder and sent them to Dean and he's like, I think addiction, maybe to like introduce the band, that would probably be the best one. And we didn't include mm-hmm. Liar, even though Justin and I kind of thought that was the best track because we figured a first single that has fucking bullshit and bitch in the song is probably as fucking bullshit in the chorus is probably not the way to hit <laughs> top 40. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so we kept that one out, although it seems like that's the one that's doing the best. So yeah, that's why we went with Addiction. And then, yeah, Liar came out last Friday because we wanted to give it a month, you know, give it some breathing room. But every day that goes by, we're like... You know how it is. Like, we just want it out so bad. Like, if we were on a major label, they'd be, like, screaming at us to stop releasing music and, you know, do more TikTok dances, but we can't take it. (laughs) Honestly, I think you guys are doing it, like, kind of the way that things are done now. Releasing singles, releasing a bunch of singles. Like, usually fucking a whole record goes out in singles before the record comes out now is what it feels like. Yeah, like, Bill Murray's album, like, he released almost every song as a single. Now... Every song on that album could be a single. There's a banger of a record, but true, true. Um, yeah, well, the thing about, we, like, we would have done that. <laughs> we would have done that, but we um, we needed to get the album out before the golf season was over. So yeah, true. yeah. <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> you should have like a wintertime sorrowful song about like how much you want to be golfing. I mean, it's maybe Justin work. won't be able to relate because it's going to be pretty warm there in the winter, isn't it? Like, yeah, you guys probably that's kind of why I moved. That's kind of why I moved down here. You just It'll play just golf year round. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But then that's that incredible. just gives Bricks the the like the reason to go on a trip, right? Exactly. In the winter. We still have our yeah, yearly trip. Yeah, we do every year. We'll be down in Arizona cooking. Cooking drives, cooking our bodies. So that bit about uh, the fucking Scottsdale boys trip in the first single is not a joke at all. It's no, not an exaggeration. No. It is a literal thing that you do. If you go Rest on our Instagram. Counts. Yeah, it makes me wonder like, what, what else is... Uh... You're like, do you really need couples therapy? <laughs> <laughs> Some pretty specific lyrics in there. Some of which I understand. 
(laughs) Some of which I do not, based on my lack of knowledge of golf. Uh, Yeah, yeah, there's a picture of us in... Sorry, I think my my audio is slow over here. You're fine. I was going to say, if you want that... uh, that Scottsdale golf trip line, like there's actually a picture of us on the Scottsdale boys trip on our Instagram and one of the reels that we tossed up, it just like pops up really quick in the reel, but it's actually me and Justin and our buddies Flood and John in there. You can get a snap oh, yeah. of that. Put that on your wall. Is that Ryan Flood? Yeah. yeah. Flood. I know oh, Flood. Floods, eh? yeah. yeah. You probably know John. You probably know John McKenzie, I would imagine. I know John that's, McKenzie that's, as well. Yeah. That's but you foursome. just said John, so it's like, how do you know if you know the John? There's too many. Like that Mike Smith character. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but no, I know John McKenzie as well. Watched yeah. a hockey game at his apartment once. That's the crew. Yeah, every year. It's a good crew. Mm-hmm. I love it. Well, this has been fucking this wonderful. Been so I want uh, I want everybody to go check out your shit. All the like maybe fucking 40 people that listen to our podcast. Please. <laughs> Go check out Majors. They got two tracks out now. Record comes out August 16th, you said? Yep. You got it. I'll be fucking knee-deep in the United States, almost done the tour that I'm on by then, and I'll be begging for home desperately. But it won't come. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the last thing to do is, uh, I don't know how you're going to both do it at the same time, but you have to do it at the same time. Yeah. At the, at same, the same time, time. Yeah, it's going to be weird because Briggs's audio is delayed. <laughs> we you have to say like who you are, and for the audience to eat shit and go fuck themselves. Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, so we're majors and eat shit, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Yeah, but at the same. But time. at the same time. <laughs> All right, I'll count you down. Ready? Okay. So, you're... Lon, are we going to say we are majors? Yeah. yeah. Say it yeah. slow yeah. and weird. weird. <laughs> it's just weird because. I'll give us a, an audible three okay. count. One, two, three. We we, made Frick's your... froze. She froze. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be great. One, no. two, three. We are We're majors. Dangerous. Eat shit. And Eat go shit. Fuck yourself. Fuck yourself. Well, that's pretty good. That actually That's went way better than I thought it was. Yeah. I was going to make you guys stay until we got it right. See?